This video demonstrates vessel mapping for percutaneous fistula planning. First, it's important to have the patient in a comfortable position and apply a tourniquet to the upper arm. We'll apply a thin amount of gel to the arm by painting it up and down. It's really important to orient the probe to prevent confusion during the vessel mapping. Most important for the percutaneous fistula creation is the presence of a perforator and characterization of it. We're looking at the median cephalic vein and following that down. And here we see the perforator vein and the junction with the median cubital vein. Sweeping back and forth, we can see the interplay. Here the cursor shows how the perforator vein goes from the deep vessels and crosses the fascia to join the median cephalic vein. Next, we're teasing out the relationship between the perforator vein and cephalic and basilic systems. We're slowly sweeping up the arm and we're watching the perforator vein come and join the cephalic. We note that the basilic branch, the median cubital vein, has come off just below that confluence of perforator to cephalic vein and then we follow that straight up to the upper arm. That shows that the perforator connection is going to lead to flow going directly up the cephalic vein and not be diverted into the basilic preferentially. Next, we're going to look at the arterial system. Here we see a single brachial artery, which is soft, compressible, and not heavily calcified. As we follow it down below the elbow, we see the arterial bifurcation with the smaller radial artery more superficially and the larger ulnar artery deeper and the veins that associate with them. As we look here, we see one of the paired ulnar veins and the deeper ulnar vein. Now we're going to think about accessing the artery and vein. We see that the basilic vein joins the brachial system very early, low down in the arm. After that, there's a single dominant brachial vein going up the arm. As we follow that brachial vein down below the elbow, we see that the more medial one is much larger than the lateral one. It also seems to transition directly to the medial ulnar vein. This is a common anatomic finding that the medial brachial vein goes directly to the median ulnar vein. For the arterial access, we want to think about where the artery is accessible and what the relationship is with the median nerve. The median nerve is seen just below the brachial artery. And you see the small fascicles and then it rotates more laterally. It's important to identify the median nerve so we don't injure that during access. In this case, because it's deep to the artery and vein, the chance of injury should be small. Next, we want to think about potential access from below. So we want to look at the distal ulnar and radial vessels. In this case, we'll start with the ulnar side. At that depth, the vessels appear quite small, so to magnify, we change to a more superficial depth on the imaging. It's possible to access the vessels about a third of the way up the forearm from the wrist. Any further than that really gets too close to the fistula creation site. As we look at this one ulnar vein, we see that the measurement is about 1.7 millimeters, which is a little bit small for accessing. A two millimeter vessel would be preferred. The ulnar artery itself measured 1.9 millimeters. Now we come over and look at the radial artery and its veins. We see that the radial artery appears to be a little bit larger, but the veins are on the small side. Measurement of that radial vein shows a diameter of only 1.3 millimeters, which would be quite small for access. 
The artery itself, however, is bigger, measuring just over two millimeters in size. With the imaging we've done and the measurements we've taken, we should be able to plan our percutaneous fistula approach.